Hey everybody, it's Jay Kitchen from jaysbeard.com. We are doing a little remembrance to a gentleman named Scott Kempner, who was a co-founder of this band, The Dictators, and the leader of a band called The Del Lords. There will be a soundtrack underneath this, but I'm going to kind of pull back a little bit so you can watch the video and my mellifluous voice will be bubbling up telling you all about Scott Kempner down under. Enjoy. We are doing this video to honor the late Scott Kempner, who was one of the pioneers of punk rock actually in New York City, certainly. He was the founder of The Dictators, a band that in their brief lifetime helped lay the groundwork for punk rock and he later founded the roots rock band called The Dell Lords. He passed on November 29th at a nursing home in Connecticut. He was 69. He died from complications related to early onset dementia. He was born and raised in the Bronx. He started his musical career not long after he graduated from the Bronx High School of Science. For those of you who don't know, the Bronx High School of Science is a pretty elite exam entrance public school in New York City. In 1972, while visiting a friend who was attending college at New Paltz, New York, he started playing music with two fellows named Andy Chernoff and Ross Friedman, who was later known as The Boss. Scott Kempner actually earned himself the nickname Top Ten. The three of them soon started performing as the Dictators. They grew to include the singer Handsome Dick Manitoba and the drummer Stu Boy King by the time it recorded its first album. The Dictators Go Girl Crazy. The album was released in 1975, a year before the Ramones debut, but it made little impact. Mark Deming, writing on the All Music Guide, called the band one of the finest and most influential proto-punk bands to walk the earth, but said that the satire and ahead of their time enthusiasm for wrestling, White Castle hamburgers, and television on their debut album confused more kids than it converted. The band was dropped by its label Epic after its first album and signed with Elektra, but also the band's two Elektra albums failed to find a big audience and the band split up, though its members would occasionally reunite over the years. After the Dictators broke up, Kempner founded the Dell Lords in 1982. And in the Dictators, he was a team player, the heart of the band, said Eric Amble, a member of the Dell Lords. But in his new band, he took the lead as chief singer and songwriter. Frank Fanaro, the Del Lord's drummer, said in an interview that Mr. Kempner was like the older brother that I never had. He was, Mr. Fanaro added, the older, cool brother that turns you on to an encyclopedia worth of rock and roll, country music, and soul music. John Pirellis of the New York Times wrote that the Del Lord's twang and thump like country rockers without ever turning their back on their hometown, New York City. Kempner's song, Pirellis added, draw on the Texas strain of country. The pushy guitar licks of the Bobby Fuller Four and the pop sense of Buddy Holly delivered with a roadhouse punch. The Del Lords released seven albums, the last of which, Elvis Club, featured the singer Dion DiMucci, best known for the doo-wop hits Run Around Sue and The Wanderer on one track. In the early 90s, Kempner and DiMucci had toured with a short-lived band called Little Kings. Kempner also performed with the Paradise Brothers and other bands. He released three solo albums, Tenement Angels, Saving Grace, and Live on Blueberry Hill. In 2019, the Dictators reformed with Mr. Kempner on board. He left the band after being diagnosed with dementia in 2021. He was born on February 6, 1954, to Manny and Lynn Kempner. He survived by his wife, Sharon Lutke, his sister, Robin Kempner, and his sister's wife, Mary Noah Kempner. May your memory be a blessing. Rest in peace, Scott Kepner. Thank you for listening and watching. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.